Hello, welcome to the Turret of Pleasure here in the Enchanted Kingdom of Hermione. I'm your host, Zip Gun. I'm the Lord Chamberlain here. And we had a pretty good holiday. I hope you did too. Uh, switched to whiskey just because of the events down south. I've called for strong drink. And uh, we figured we'd just watch some planes crash instead of the fall of the biggest democracy in the Western world. So, and I was going to, over the holidays, I was going to hopefully receive some mail with which I could uh, further discuss my recent um, rediscovery of the band Redbone. And uh, I, my previous video, I made all kinds of errors and mistakes and misidentified people and um, because I didn't really have the material at my disposal, and uh, all I had was the three LPs uh, that I have, plus the quad LP of Message and the Drum. And once I kind of got, you know, I watched, I was watching them on YouTube, listening to them on YouTube, I should say. And uh, YouTube is handy for that. Good audio, you know, remaster. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, I, you know, I mean, I really should own these. So... I looked at, and I was afraid they'd be expensive. And lo, they weren't. They were actually pretty cheap. And I managed to buy all seven of their albums on um, three separate CD reissues by three separate CD reissue companies, all put out at roughly the same, same time. And I thought that was kind of curious. I thought, okay, well, we'll go through these. So I ordered them all pretty much the same day. Um, three days later, this one showed up. The first album, Redbone, uh, this has been put out by Repertoire Records. 2016, they put this out. Now, this is a straight reissue of the first album. Um, the only bonus tracks on it are the single of Crazy Cajun Cakewalk Band, the A-side and the B-side. A-side is stereo, B-side's mono. I can't really tell the difference between the stereo single version and the album version. I, I don't know if there is a difference. But there it is. They did it. It's a little bit of a cork-sniffy record collector thing to do. But you know what? Who else is going to be buying these things? So I think that's a good idea. It uh, looks good good looking package um the notes are all right now the think about all three of these there's three of them they all contain things that make me kind of go ah. uh this one they all all three of them have biographies of the band they all differ in tiny details which i'm not going to even bother going into um somebody really should write a book about this band it would be very interesting um but uh, one of the interesting things here about this record, now this record came out in 1970. I remember when it came out as a kid, and I remember quite liking it. And the, the song, Crazy Cajun Cakewalk Band, has been stuck in my head for 50 years. One of these earworms. Now, it's interesting. On the first record, produced by Tall Lolly Vegas and Pete Wil Wilding, uh, Lolly and Pat Vegas had been working in music for over 10 years by this point. So they were, they knew what they were doing. And they'd signed Epic, and it was a big deal. Epic allowed them to put out a double album as their debut, just like Chicago. So this was a, you know, Columbia was behind this. Now, uh, a couple of neat things about this. A fellow by the name of Jay Ford, Jim Ford, I believe, gets co-writing credits on K Crazy Cajun Cakewalk Band, and Nikki Hokey. Now, Nikki Hokey, as some might know, uh, was a song that was covered by P.J. Proby, I think in 1967. Had a minor hit with it. Uh, Aretha Franklin did it on Lady Soul. Brinsley Schwartz did it on one of their records in the early 70s. So it was a kind of a song that had, it wasn't really a hit per se, I guess it was, but it had currency amongst the 60s people that were likely to do other people's songs. 
And this, th these two songs, I think, predated Redbone by a little bit. They might have been written around the same time as Jim Ford's Harlan County record, which is, which is this legendary cult item that I've yet to hear. But if I find it, I'll do a thing on it, a video on it. At any rate, most of the songs, the, the, the leader of this band really was Lolly Vegas. Most of the singing and most of the guitar soloing through a Leslie Speaker, a lot of it, was by him and his brother, Pat Vegas, an excellent bass player and singer. They were all really good singers. Um, he was kind of his lieutenant, if you will. Co-wrote uh, co a lot of songs with Lolly. Wrote a few songs by himself as he won two, two here that are just P Vegas. Um, you know, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine credited to L Vegas. Um, strangely, there are now there's there's a bunch of jams on this record. It's kind of why it was a double. And um, one of them is called I'm a Man. That one's credited to L Vegas. It's an instrumental. It's not really a jam. But there's three. There's one called Things Go Better, dot, dot, dot. There's one called Sweet Mode, S-U-I-T-E. And there's one rather creatively called Jambo. These are credited to L Vegas, P Vegas, J Ford, R.A. Bellamy, Tony Bellamy, the rhythm, well, the guitar, other guitarist, and Pete DePoe, Last Walking Berry, is known, also known as. So the, the writing credits for the jams were the whole band, plus J. Ford. Now, on my original album of this recording, J. Ford doesn't get a credit on these. I'd love to know why he gets a credit nowadays. He's been dead for years. He wasn't in Redbone, and I don't think, I think this is a mistake. That's what I think. I can't imagine how he would have co-written a jam. So that's the, that's the little wart in this one. Um, you know, I mean, maybe they just did it to see who's paying attention. Um, you will note on the first album of credit, Redbone is Lolly Vegas, vocal, guitar. Tony Bellamy, vocal, guitar. Pat Vegas, vocal electric bass. Pete Defoe drums. There you go. Pretty straightforward. Good record. This Now this was 20 bucks and that's not cheap but you know 20 bucks to my door in two days. Pretty good. I expect to pay 20 bucks for a good CD if I'm going to go buy one. And then and it, now it gets kind of interesting. So the next one I ordered was this one. Now, this, the release label is called Floating World, or the label is Floating World, and it appears that Retro World is their re-release division, if you will. This contains record number two, Potlatch, record number three, Message from a Drum, and rather curiously, record number seven, which was called Cycles, and came out for RCA. That was their last studio record. This record is also excellent. Um, this was the first Redbone I really got familiar with, and it has the song Maggie, which is a minor hit. Um, and it's got the song Judgment Day, which goes into a jam called Without Reservation, another very creatively named jam. And um, to me, that's the best one to, if you want to listen, if you want to get what Redbone's all about in like six and a half minutes, Listen to Judgment Day, and it, it sort of crossfades into Without Reservation, which isn't very useful on YouTube. It doesn't do that, of course. And um, there's a lot of good good songs on this second album. Um, there's one called Who Can Say, which is just this string-fed sort of soupy ballad. But these guys are funny. They write songs that sound incredibly hokey, They've, you know, they're, they're pop songs in, in a very traditional pop way. And yet, they stick in your head, and they're really well-crafted songs. Lyrically, they're sometimes not exactly great art. But, again, we're talking about 1970 here. There is a song called Drinkin' and Blow, B-L-O. Mm -hmm. uh, Pat Vegas writes a song about Alcatraz, which 
is the closest I think they get to any kind of militancy on this record. Um, so here we got uh, Maggie by Lolly Vegas, Light as a Feather by Pat Vegas, Who Can Say, which is the mellow ballad by Lolly, sung by Lolly. They also deemed it important on a lot of these records to tell you who sings and who does the solos. And funnily enough, of course, all the solos are by Lolly, except Lolly likes writes one, two, three, four, five, six songs by himself. Pat writes three by himself. And there's one song where Tony Bellamy gets a writing credit with Pat and Lolly. Bad news ain't no news at all. And that's the moment where it says vocal, group and guitar interludes by Tony and Lolly. The rest of the time it's like lead vocal and solo guitar, Lolly. Lead vocal by Pat, lead vocal by Pat. So clearly Pat and Lolly ran this band. Now, uh, and then we get a message from a drum. Now, this is a really good record. It's a very interesting record. Um, it had their first decent hit on it, which was The Witch Queen of New Orleans. Um, I, I think it was number two in England, in the UK. It got to about number 20-something, I think, in North America. But everybody's heard it. Everybody knows it. Um, and that was written by Pat and Lolly. And there's, there's a few songs. When You Got Trouble, a really interesting, just a straight rock song. Pat and Lolly. Lolly writes uh, one, two, three, four, five, six by himself. Pat writes two by himself. Lolly and Pat write about three, two together. And Lolly, Pat, and again, Robert Anthony Bellamy, Tony Bellamy, do the song Niji Trance. Now, Tony would do the dancing. You know, if, he would be the guy with the shaker, and he would come out and do the, the dancing, and then the band would start in, and then he'd put on his guitar and play his guitar. Now, I'll note that in the... They don't mention who plays what on each individual record, just at the end here. Pat Vegas, bass, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, piano, vocals. Tony Bellamy, now he's been demoted to rhythm guitar, wah-wah, dobro vocals. Lolly Vegas has now been promoted to lead guitar, organ, acoustic guitar, vocals, and Pete, who now has his name, Last Walking Bear, in brackets, Defoe plays the drums. This, I, I can't state how much, how well these guys play together. And they sing really well together. And there's a, there's a great video somewhere on YouTube of a guy, some English guy, analyzing a live performance of Come and Get Your Love. And it's really interesting because these guys with two guitars, bass, and drums, four vocals, and they got a big sound. A uh, message from a drum includes the aforementioned 14 second long instrumental fusion tracks, Max Splivitz and Perico. And I can't, the only thing I can think is maybe Lolly got extra writing royalties for them because they were considered songs. I don't know. I can't figure this. Um, and then the last, on disc two, all by itself, is album number seven, Cycles. Cycles was after Tony had quit. Uh, Pete was gone and had been replaced by a couple of different drummers. Butch Rivera, Rivera Butch, I can't remember his last name, Rivera, Rivera, I'll see it in a second. And another, uh, another fellow played on the album after Message from the Drum. But Cycles was a weird one because it was, they got sort of ran into Linda Creed, who was involved with Jerry Goldstein, who was involved with War, and he also did the great Tim Buckley record, Greetings from L.A., and he had a thing called Far Out Productions, which I think by 1977, which is when this album came out, it was now called something else, produced by Linda Creed and Jerry Goldstein in association with Pat and Lolly Vegas for Golden Bone Productions, the only record that Pat and Lolly did not produce, um, other than the first two, which Pete Weldon co-produced. Uh, needless to say, all the songs are written by either Pat or Lolly, or both of them, except for one credited to Pat, Lolly, and Eddie Summers. Now, they don't tell us who plays on this record. That's my first quibble about this. There's a keyboardist who is, I do believe he's mentioned in the other one of these, because both of these things, these they all have liner notes that assume you know nothing about Redbone. So even though Cycles is on this package, the lineup who plays on it is mentioned in the other package that it's not on, which I'll get to in a second. 
Also, an odd thing that I've never been able to figure out is message from a drum at the end of it has a 22nd track that's not on the vinyl, which is a version of chant colon 13th hour, which was the leadoff track on side two of Potlatch. It appears to be one second shorter. I cannot tell any audio difference with it. I don't know why it's on the CD. I can't figure it out. And they also kind of, and this is me, the nerd, talking. Uh, here we go. Tracks 1 to 10 originally released as UK Epic 64198 in 1970. That's true. I know that's true, because I know that style of number was British. However, then they go and say, for a message from a drum, originally released as UK Epic KE 30815. That's not right. That's the American number. And... Also with um, Cycles, originally released as UK RCA APLI slash 2352. I'm pretty sure that's the American number too, not the British number. So, you know, I mean, these things, I, I'm glad these exist. They were, th one of these last two was 10 bucks. So it's like, I'm not going to not buy it. But there's a, just a tiny bit of not paying attention here. Some great, you know, some of those seven inches which is neat, the very rare seven inch when you've got trouble. I'd want that in my jukebox. Um, you'll note that some of these are are European because these guys were actually probably bigger in Europe than they were in America um, until, and that takes me to the third CD. So this is on, what you call it, what's it, Floating World, Retro World. That one's on Repertoire. Both of these are good labels. They do good work. They're reasonably priced. And then we have this one, which is a little curious, and this comes out on the good old BGO label. It claims that it's AAD. Hmm, okay, maybe. Doesn't sound AAD. Now, beat, beat goes on, BGO. They're a great reissue label. I remember they reissued Miles Davis's On the Corner when CBS inexplicably allowed it to lapse out of print. They put it in a nice little cardboard sleeve. I'm not really sure why, because it's really just the same as the back cover. Um, anyway, this one picks up where that one, well, this fills the gap in that one, I should say, because this features the album Already Here, which came after Message from a Drum, uh, Wovoka, which came after Already Here, and Beaded Dreams Through Turquoise Eyes, the record I could not remember the name of in the last video because I didn't have a copy of it uh, with me. Um, now, this is great. Now, again, I really underestimated this one. I thought this would be the weakest of the three packages because um, as time went on, and needless to say, disc two leads off with the long version of Come and Get Your Love, which has kind of defined this band, sadly. Now, there, you know what? I went back to Come and Get Your Love, and it's a pretty damn good song. But um, we'll get to that in a minute. Already Here came out in, um, I think it was 1971. 72. Um, by this point, Pete Defoe had had to quit the band because his father had died and he was needed at home. And so Arturo Perez joined in. If I remember right, God, I hope I'm right on this. He was a cousin of Tony's, Tony Bellamy. Now, um, interestingly, again, Lolly Vegas, lead guitar vocals. Tony Bellamy, rhythm guitar vocals. Pat Vegas, bass vocals, Arturo Perez, drums, percussion. Okay. There are, now this booklet is kind of curious. It's, it's pretty typical BGO. So here we got a, looks like a poem. Special thanks to Clive Davis. Yeah, he was in their corner. This appears to be the lyrics to Fado, the lyrics to Motivation. So I think we got the lyrics to already here, or most of it anyway. There's a song called Good Enough for Jesus that kind of had me scratching my head a bit. And um, I'm trying to find where is the... Ah, the writing credits are on the back of the thing. Okay, so I'm going to... And if you think I'm obsessing about this just a bit, it's kind of funny to watch how this works. So already here has um, a high. There are three songs on here that Tony Bellamy has... Um, Writing credits on, Motivation, co-written by the Vegas Brothers, 
Condition Your Condition, co-written by the Vegas Brothers, um, and Someday, subtitled A Good Song, co-written with Pat Vegas. Tony Bellaby never had a writing credit all to himself in this band, and that kind of makes me wonder if that might have had something to do with him leaving the band after Beated Dreams through Turquoise Eyes, where he does not receive a single writing credit. Now, writing credits in, in bands in the 70s meant money. And so I'm, I'd love to know, for instance, there's a great song. It's, a, it's one of the great hokey songs. Someday, someday I'm going to write me a good song, he sings. And it's a really, oh, again, it's like Philly soul. There's strings. There's background singers. It's, it's a ballad. And the lyrics are just, again, the lyrics are kind of hokey, but they're very heartfelt. And it's, it's, a, I, it's stuck in my head. It's, got, it's an earworm. Um, apparently, Tony wrote the lyrics. Tony wrote the most of the song. I'd love to know what part Pat wrote. Probably the bass line is my guess. Now, in here somewhere, there is a Pat Vegas story. I'm pretty sure it's in this one. Where he... Um, basically complains because Lolly didn't give him a writing credit for Come and Get Your Love, which would have, of course, been a matter of some money. Uh, and he, he explains here how he got, got up at three in the morning and went over to help Lolly write it. And, you know, but only on the condition that it would be a car ride. Uh-oh. Well, Minister of Defense has detected a security breach, I suspect. Anyways, um, again, this record, I suspect that this record would be a little bit more Mersh. Good Enough for Jesus is a Pat Vegas song. It's not really very good, actually, to be honest. They do a really good version of Poison Ivy, the Lieber Stoller song. Uh, they do, there's a song called Sweet Lady of Love, you know, it was 1972. Uh, Liquid Truth is another kind of an interesting song. And, of course, this has their band song. Now, this didn't even come out on the world. Oh, oh. Um, we Were All Wounded at Wounded Knee, which is Pat Vegas' song written with somebody named S. Barron. And it was controversial. CBS wouldn't put it out uh, in North America. Of course, they did put it out in Holland, and it was a number one hit. So we knew. Oh, the outrage. Um, so already, already here, and I'm kind of getting crossing over here a bit, because they came out very quickly. Um, already here, the title song, co-titled Bruja, is a really cool instrumental, where they just take off into, like, it's like fusion music. It's like their they're, they're Mahavishnu thing. And Lolly is an amazingly good guitar player, and it's there's real teeth to this music. I mean, when they're writing Someday I'm Gonna Rap Me a Good Song, their commercial instincts are impeccable. When they decide to really cut loose and jam like they do on Already Here, there's no fooling around. These guys really push the envelope. And I really respect that. And the second half of Wovoka is on the second CD, which is a little awkward, but whatever. It keeps it cheap. And it features the long version of Come and Get Your Love. I'll bet you can't remember why it's longer. I forgot. And I like the long version. There's a great song Tony Bellamy co-writes called Day to Day Life. Uh, which features the deathless line, day-to-day -day life with my common-law wife. Report? Is it okay? Did you take care of it? Okay. Go take a look. Go take a look. I know. Anyway, um, it also features... The thing about Wovoka that especially delights me is that apparently, well, according to Pat... He had an electric sitar that the Ventures had given him. Other people who are close to the band tell me that that story is not true. The electric sitar was laying around the studio when Lolly picked it up. When hey, this is neat. Needless to say, if you remember the 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 hook in "Come and Get Your Love," that's the electric sitar. A fascinating instrument. Um, it's also on. Someday a Good Song, which I'm starting to like more and more as I listen to it. And it's he goes nuts on it on a song called 23rd and Mad, which strangely features a writing credit for Pete DePoe, 
who had not been in the band for two albums at this point. So, and I asked um, Butch, the drummer, who's in here, and he said it was dedicated to Pete. But knowing these guys and their writing credit fetish, Butch Riliera, sorry Butch, um, and there they are. That's the back cover of the one record the Butch is on. And Butch, I think, also said that he might not have played drums on Come and Get Your Love. So it's not really um, clear. Pete doesn't get a, a credit for being an extra on this album. Uh, Joe Samples on it. Mm. Sherry Williams, background vocals. Eddie Cacciato on percussion. Johnny Lopez on background vocals. Dress Review is credited with Time. Gizipi Al Cutillo is... is is called friend anyway 23rd and mad lolly does a workout on the electric sitar that is just to die for a really good record much better than i thought it would be the one i was really expecting to not like was beat it the dreams through turquoise eyes and by this point we've gotten into things like lead guitar lead vocals for lolly pat playing fender bass roto bass in quotes whatever that means Lead vocals, Tony Bellamy on rhythm guitar, congas and background vocals, Butch Riera on drums, percussion and background vocals. Special thanks to Bonnie Bramlett, hmm, Mary Clayton, hmm, Clyde King. Some names I recognize here in the singers. Inspiration, RDCCA, JV. I'm not sure who those people would be. Now, this record was the first album that came out in the wake of Come and Get Your Love, which was a top five hit in North America. And they were kind of uh, doing pretty good. Funnily enough, the album that that is from, I don't think it did that great. I don't think it sold that many copies. But the single did really well. And um, so this was the follow-up. So there's a couple of songs, a song called One More Time, that's a lot like Come and Get Your Love. Susie Girl, which is just a straight pop song. Uh, there's a song called Only You and Rock and Roll that's not as bad as that title suggests. Written by the two Vegas brothers. Uh, Blood, Sweat, and Tears by Pat Vegas. There's a song called Cook em with De Red Bone, which is what you might expect. Um, Pat Vegas writes a sort of a ballad, which is the title song, which, again, it's it's hokey, but it's it's stuck in my head. I can't get rid of it. Uh, and the rest are the Pat and Lolly kind of trade off. But this record is, it's solid. They sound maybe a tiny bit tired. But that is to be expected. This was their sixth album in something like four years. They'd been touring like mad, particularly in Britain and in Europe. Uh, they'd had a number one hit, or a number two hit, I think it was in England. A number one hit in Holland, a top five hit in America in the last couple of years. So, and immediately after this record, their contract with Epic expired. And Tony quit the band. Butch quit the band. I don't know why Tony quit the band. I can guess. Um, these guys, not much is, meant, is mentioned about sort of, you know, why stuff happens with this band. Um, these guys hung out with Jim Ford. Jim Ford was one of these guys that hung out a lot with Sly Stone and could keep up with them. So I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility that by the time Bearded, by the time the Epic contract was done, these guys were knackered and they were pretty much partied out. I know that Tony did nothing for a couple of years and then formed another band. And I think um, Beated Dreams is 74, Cycles is 77. So I think they had to kind of slow down, lick their wounds. Uh, the Vegas Brothers reinvented the band, really, because the uh, Cycles record actually says on the cover, uh, you know, Redbone featuring Pat and Molly Vegas. Well, the Crown Prince wants an audience. At any rate, this is on BGO, and BGO, um, like I say, um, the, um, the one thing I haven't looked at is the total times. Now, the only knock against this one, this one, and they all sound good. They've all been remastered. The only knock against this one is that there was a Wounded Bird reissue of Bearded Dreams that featured quite a few bonus tracks, one of which was this last single they did, 
for um, Epic, which was, and I can't remember the name of it, help me. But again, it was just another rewrite of Come and Get Your Love, and it actually wasn't very good. It had a B-side called Physical Attraction, which again, I think I know what that's about. And I had a few other bonus tracks that I would actually like to have. They're all on YouTube, so I can listen to them. Um, but I, I, there's a question whether they would have actually fit on this uh, double pack. But there you have it. The whole thing cost me 20 less than 50 bucks Canadian for all seven of their records in mass, remastered sound that you really don't need better than this. And again, um, if you've never heard of these guys, and or and or if you've only ever heard Come and Get Your Love, they really merit a reappraisal. Um, their pop craft was, was sublime. Um, they really could play. And they, they weren't afraid to push the barriers. Um, they're mu musically, they don't really have that much to do with Native American culture because they were influenced by everything. Cajun music, large Cajun influence. But funk, I hear a lot of Philly soul. I hear a bit of Motown. Of course, the Vegas Brothers played with everybody in the 60s. Um, so they're really well-rounded. And the band, as a unit, played very well together. And despite the fact that Tony Bellamy, kind of, I think, his importance was undermined as time went on, he was, like, if you watch live videos, of, he's really important to this band. And as a one-two punch on guitar, these guys are up there with Reggie Lucas and Pete Cozy of Miles Davis's band of the 70s. And they really, they sound really good together. And um, I, I highly recommend any of these. Go listen to them on YouTube. It's free. Um, if, you, if you're like me and you like the hard copy, these are cheap. Uh, they might not be around for much longer. 2016 and 2017. I do, I'm going to thank the powers that be for meeting out the album so they didn't have to duplicate anything. That's great. So, yeah, there you have it. And that's the last I'll talk about Redbone for a while, I suspect. But um, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe. And um, I got more stuff, but I got to, I got to, this time I'm going to actually listen to it all before I review it. <laughs> so take care. Be, stay safe. Wear your mask. Um, we're already in the new wave after Christmas, so it's going to take a little while yet. Be kind to each other. Watch, mind your P's and Q's, and we'll get out of this in one way or another. Take care.